What up guys, welcome back to the channel. Here's what we're doing today. I said I was gonna do it, so I'm gonna do it. Today we're gonna to be putting the transmission in the Civic. Now this is going to be a task of all tasks, but it shouldn't take that long, I've done it before. But unlike last time, this time I'm gonna make sure that I'm more organized. I'm gonna put my parts out where I need to be. I'm gonna get my tools ready. I just wanna be prepared so this will go as efficiently as possible. So let me get started on that part. The sun is sunny. So before I even jack this thing up, I want to go ahead and get all of this stuff disconnected that's currently in the way. At least most of it, some of it. Basically, we're going to pull off this intake pipe. That'll free up a little bit a little bit of room. That'll take that blow off valve out of the way. I'm not draining. I'm not doing all this radiator drain. We're going to leave all that stuff hooked up. But we're going to disassemble the clutch. Get that out of the way. Uh, I don't know. We're going to get us as much as I can because I need to see the starter. Huh. And uh, But most of the starter you take out from the bottom anyway. But we're going to get this stuff taken out, out from up top. And then we're going to get it going. Get it going. Get it going. All right. So check it out. We are moving right along. Man, it wasn't that much transmission oil in there. That's probably the first problem. So, but the good thing is I don't see any flakes or anything. So that part is good. I have a feeling that I actually probably broke that shift selector again. For some strange reason, I have a feeling that's what it is. Because it's got the same symptoms as the last time. And if that's the case, because I'm still having problems getting that snap clip in. But when I fixed it, this one, I didn't have any problems putting the snap, the snap ring in. So worst case scenario, I will replace the snap ring and continue to use this one because this is a, a uh, an LS so we're going to have better gearing for sure but uh, yeah so the transmission fluid already, already almost drained and it only took like two minutes we got a leak somewhere but okay that ain't surprising we are moving right along as you can see we got the axle out nut off all of this was easy peasy I need to remove the traction bar uh, I'll pull the starter after i do the other side and then me we'll be ready to pull this bad boy out easy peasy so i'm not sure if you'll be able to see this or not but well i won't even bother bother showing you one thing that i noticed that i know was contributing to the problem and i wish i would have tested i would have got up under here before i started all this because we're over halfway there is pulling the transmission now the shift linkage at the at the shifter there's a screw missing you know how those, there's the, the two screws, the bushing and all of that? It's missing one of the screws. So that's an issue in itself. But I know that wasn't a total problem. It could have caused the problem with the transmission. And the reason why I know it's not the problem is because my car was it's just locked up. It was just locking up. Unless it was locking up because it was like going in reverse. I just don't want to take no chances at this point. So I'm going to finish pulling the transmission. You know, if nothing is wrong with it and it's just that linkage, Hey, I'm okay with it. I need to inspect it anyway. Well, I say I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, we got the starter out. So now we can truly get ready to start unbolting this thing. Now I can tell you the last time I did this, I pulled the starter out, I dropped it. It fell in a million pieces, but luckily I was able to get it back together and it worked fine. So we gotta be real careful with this thing because I do not want to drop it again. Now let's finish unscrewing this crap. Now that I can get to those bolts right there to start unscrewing those. I mean, not, boy, I'm finna mess up. Not unscrew them, but unscrewing the ones to the engine. Actually, I take that back. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my new jack stands right here. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do with these is put them up under the engine to hold that up. Cause we gotta hold that up once I start unscrewing the transmission. And I don't wanna use my jack for it because I'm gonna use, use that to lower the transmission. So we're going to use jack stands and a piece of wood and hopefully that works. So let me find a piece of wood so we can get that popping. Okay guys, so I like to take breaks while I'm working, but we got the transmission out. Yeah. So now, man, I'm really thinking about replacing that clutch. I really feel like I should, should do that at the same time, but I need to do a little bit more research and I don't know how long I can keep this thing apart. Before. The HOA comes with all the smoke. But what we're fixing to do now is move this transmission into where the other one is so I can take it apart and start looking at it to figure out what's wrong with it. Come with me on that journey. And I also need to swap out the uh, throw out bearing. But here's the thing. I still haven't gotten that snap ring on 
that other transmission so depending on what's wrong with this one i may just replace whatever part that's broke on here with the part on that one and then come back to that one later or either sell it because it's a, it's a good transmission i just gotta get that snap ring on maybe i can sell it and someone else can figure it out i ain't been able to so we fixing to pull this apart take a look at it see what we can find look at that i can tell you all look at all those look at all that metal right there i'm thinking this thing is gonna be toast i don't know if you can see it if the camera is picking it up but in that axle in the shaft around that so that bearing so i think the bearing probably gave way hmm interesting i'm not surprised though but let's be for sure and take it apart all right we are out here we got both transmissions up here b16 b18 ls transmission cases look very similar now i have a screw mount hole that's broken on this or better yet i wonder if i can use this top on this transmission and be done with it because i know i can get the snap ring in this one i've done it a million times a million times as in one just some just something i was thinking about not sure if that's going to work or not but right now what we're fixing to do is take this transmission apart so i can see what's broken i, I already see that there's something broken there's no doubt about that just got to figure out what let's do it we got the transmission case off as you can see over here there is tons of carnage somewhere just got to figure out where it's coming from i mean looking at the gears oh i'm pretty sure that's going to be a wow where is the carnage that is a lot of carnage look at this what is this i don't know where that came from that's not a bearing it doesn't look like it's the gear shifter something is messed up bad and it looks like it's going to be the main shaft it's going to be the main shaft i can see it already down there so either the bearing gave way the bearing there is no bearing i think i blew out the bearing which is kind of like what i expected so let me take this gear stack off and confirm when i tell you that transmission is toast it is toast it's toast when you look at this this is sheared in the case we got debris everywhere there shouldn't be debris we got these things that i don't even know what they are we got these that's messed up you got all of that over there all of that need to come out man i think at the end of the day this case is cases aren't that expensive i think it would be my best in my best interest to just get a new case for this transmission uh look at that counter shaft i don't know if you can see it or not but it's messed up pretty bad where that bearing went probably need a new counter shaft too that gear is messed up yeah i may just have to sell this one for parts to tell you the truth and use that but the one thing that i want to do before i do anything is see if this b16 case will fit on i mean to see if this b18 case will fit on this b16 transmission because i had no problem getting a snap ring on the top when i put this transmission back together so hmm something to think about but we'll see though hey bubba you getting your rest i done took so many breaks it's ridiculous but we back at it where i left off was i was cleaning off the case this is the b18 case the top half i'm going to put that on the b16 bottom half and i'm hoping that i can get the snap ring that the snap ring will snap in this case it even looks different it looks like it just looks better so i'm hoping it'll snap in this case because it snapped before and then i don't know what i'm gonna do about this thing but we're gonna find something to do with it one day but right now let me finish cleaning this up and i hope i got some more rtv well actually i'm not going to put no rtv on it just yet first thing i'm going to do is make sure i can get the snap ring on if that works we're going to put some rtv on it seal it up and then probably put it in the uh in the car tomorrow that'll give a little bit of time for the rtv to dry so let me finish cleaning this and y'all don't want to see that so we just cut that part out so i can get this thing closed okay here we are day two with the transmission repair install whatever you want to call it now let me tell you something because this is interesting this is the top case that came with the transmission i just got and if you recall i was having major issues getting the snap ring on never could get it on so what i did was take the top case for my b18 put it on the b16 and voila the snap ring took about two seconds to get snapped into place so 
Must be something wrong with this case. Must be something obstructing it. I don't know. But what I do know is I spent a lot of time taking this case apart, putting it back on, taking this case apart, putting it back on, thinking it was something I was doing wrong to get the snap ring set. And it wasn't me at all. It was the case. So now we got the transmission all bolted back up. Just got to... I just had to put a couple more bolts in it. Put the uh, the ball spring bolts, uh, the reverse bolt. I think that's it right there. And we will be ready to put it back in the car. Need to put that on there too. So let me do that and we can get this thing ready. What I do want to do while this is off because I haven't tested it is make sure that I can uh, remove this this field plug while the car is while it's still on the table. It would be a whole lot easier than trying to then get this thing in and realize the plug won't even come off. So let me show you where we are with the Civic today. Now at least. All right, so we got the Civic all buttoned up. We got the transmission back in, starter back in. Now we're just trying to get the suspension in and the uh, axles. But there's something I want to show y'all. This axle, the boot busted. Yeah, I could have replaced the boot, but I got a whole new axle. I think that off Amazon, eBay, one of the two. And it appears to be the exact same axle. It's supposed to be anyway. So we're gonna try to put this in first. Everything looks to be right. This is a little different right here. I don't know if that's gonna make a difference. But other than that, it appears to be the same. So we're gonna put this new axle in with a good boot. And we're gonna have a brand new axle on the passenger side. And I mean, right now we're just buttoning it up. I don't know where some of these wires came from. I think they're grounds. So maybe that came from right there. So. So we gotta do a lot of buttoning up. Not sure when it's when it's gonna when I'm gonna get the test driving. Cause I really want to get all this this stuff buttoned up right here. I don't even remember what that is. What is all in wire? I ain't got no. I don't know. Anyway, that's what we're fixing to do now. Put these axle in. Put the suspension in and wrap it up. So we're in the Civic. It's like a whole week later, and we about to do. We about to test the transmission. I kind of tested it briefly, you know, just putting through the gears, but I had to get another battery. I didn't want to get stopped on the side of the road again so we got another battery now we fixing to put the gopro up and i don't know i may get in it a little bit i probably need to get my laptop so i can data log a little bit while i'm while i'm in it so let me go do that i need to go get my laptop be right back okay so here goes nothing this will be the first time in a long time that it actually starts without me putting it on some type of charging system. You gotta be kidding me. What the fuck? All right, so as you can see, it's hot out here, it's real hot. Got my fuel kind of dialed in, I think. Not really. But we are fixing the data log. Let's get to it.
cannot believe my shit locked up. That is HTS for you. Wowzers. Wowzers. Well, we'll at least save what I got. That idol is amazing. What's today? 10, 5, 24. All right, we got it down a lot. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. We got the Honda back on the road. Oil pressure is good. Temperatures is good. Clutch feels good. Man, that, that clutch is stiff down the mud. This your boy. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.